Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and this video is going to be a bit different because we're not actually going to be programming in Unity. Now, the thing is, a lot of people use AI for developing anyway. We've not always been the biggest fans of it, especially for multiplayer, because it's really tricky, and Perna is also a newer system, so finding AIs that are actually familiar with it can be difficult. And so, a member of the community, NeoTime, has actually built the PerChat AI. So if you go to tools and Pernet, you can see we've actually made a part of the Pernet ecosystem here by just allowing you to easily click on the Perchat link right here and it'll take you to the perchat.app website where in where you can start uh, chatting. And so I've tested this out a bit and generally it's working really, really well. We've been very impressed with it. Of course, again, it's still AI, so it, at times it will be confidently wrong. But at least here you have an AI that you know is trained and prompted to work with Pernet API. So when you are, start asking generic questions about networking or just generic game development for that sake, it's already prepared to answer those questions. So let's try something very simple. Let's try and get it to explain to us how we work with RPCs. All right, and now that it finished generating, as you can see now, it's explaining us essentially the basic setup. So we're going into an unspawn, returning it for the server. Uh, it's running the RPC method, so it's calling it to the server. The server received the RPC. And you can see the server will then call out an observer. So obviously tell everybody that the observer has also received this uh, and so on. And it's essentially going through different RPC types. So it's going through the server RPC, observer RPC, and the target RPC as well. So yeah, this generally looks good without delving too much into it. Now let's try and ask it an elaborating question here. So for example, the unspawned, why do we return if as server? So I'm asking, why do we do this? Won't this stop the host server plus client from running the logic? And obviously I know that it doesn't because the as server runs for the host twice, once as server and one not as server. So let's see if that does it. And yeah, exactly. It explains it very well here. When you run as host server plus client, Pernet actually runs your code twice. Once with as server true and once with as server false. This prevents duplicate execution on client side logic. And yeah, there we go. And it essentially explains to us who runs it where and shows some examples. Now let's try something a tad more advanced. Let's try and ask it about transport, for example. So let's say that I'm trying to build on Steam and I want a dedicated server that is constantly online. What transport should I be using? And sure enough, it tells us that the Steam transport indeed has a dedicated server checkbox, which is right here, as you can see. So we can just toggle the dedicated server. And then it essentially goes through with you exactly what this allows and what it gives. And also for that sake, what are the requirements for this uh, to work? And it actually also tries to go through some setup steps. So in general, I just wanted to quickly show it. I think it's a very helpful tool, especially if you're new to networking. I would say if you're more advanced with networking in general, you're probably better off without AI typically. But it can help you also get to know the system a lot better, right? So you might be a really good developer, but not very familiar with Pernet, in which case this can help a lot. Because obviously we try to keep our docs as good as possible, but you know we're only human after all. Um, so we might miss things as well. There might be things that aren't very clear. For example, how to use the network assets more in depth or how to work with the network visibility. In that case, try and ask the AI. It might have a really good response for you. Yeah, that's about it. And I hope you have a wonderful day.